Get ready, everyone. Here come the Longhorns. Cattle and Cowboys are taking over the streets of downtown San Antonio, bringing the Old West back to Texas. Grab your boots. KSAT 12 is hosting a hoedown. We're celebrating rodeo season with a kickoff party like you have never seen before. And they've got the best beans, the most mouth-watering carne guisada. The Vaquero Cook-Off is the ultimate face-off between teams of cowboy cooks. It's Western Heritage Weekend. Let's, Let's rodeo, rodeo San Antonio. Antonio. Live from downtown San Antonio, the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. SA Live coverage powered by the all-new 2020 Silverado HD. This is where the Old West makes its return to the Alamo City. Welcome to the 2020 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive, the official kickoff to the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. And good morning, everyone. I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorostiza. Right now, a huge herd of cattle is being released onto Houston Street, and they're going to make their way right through the heart of the Alamo City. These gentle giants carry with them the rich heritage and tradition of the Lone Star State, and that's what we are honoring today. And we are live right here on Houston Street, right where the parade is going to be going through in the cattle drive at the corner of Jefferson. And while we wait for all those longhorns and sheep and everything, Look at the crowd that is here on this beautiful day. I think they are ready to rodeo and it's like living history is all just like it used to be back in the 1800s around here. Oh yes, and they can't we can't wait to show you what this year has to offer. The Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive features dozens of decorated wagons dating as far back as the late 1800s. The parade was started 13 years ago. It celebrates the time in history before railroads came to Texas. Historic cattle drives would often start here in San Antonio and the surrounding area and then head north and west across the United States. Those were the true days of the Old West. The first modern cattle drive consisted of 35 Longhorn. Today, we've got more than 60, followed by sheep, horses, carriages, buggies, cowboys, dancers, and bands all continuing the story of who we are as Texans. It is exciting, and let's take you right into the middle of the action. Right now, David Elder is back there with all those longhorns and cattle right behind him. Yes, all right. David, don't <laughs> slow down. Just keep moving. It is. I know. <laughs> yeah, I will not slow down. Actually, keep going. Y'all can creep up a little bit. We got a truck right here holding up some of our people right here. But you guys, it's happening. It's going down. The cattle are walking right behind us. And with me right now is Dr. Kimball. This is the Kimball cattle that are right behind us right here. But talk to me about the process of getting the cattle here and what it means to be a part of this event. Well, it takes me 10 days to go ahead and go out to every one of our pastures and bring these cattle up into a pen and get them collated out and separated out so they're all docile, calm cattle, which you see behind me walking, to make sure this is a good, secure, safe parade. Safe parade, that's a big important one. So that's what it has to be. And for people who don't really know too much about Longhorns, you had a really brief history lesson for me earlier, but you had said they had actually come, the Spanish brought them over. Like Columbus actually helped bring over what is the original kind of cattle that created the Longhorn, right? Yes, and by, they are actually African bred cattle. Um, and in 1400, they were in, moved into Spain, and Christopher Columbus brought them over to the island of San Domingo. Then they actually got over to uh, the southern part of the United States into Mexico. And then they spread all over the place, up to Nebraska, all over Texas, hundreds of thousands of longhorn cattle. And they have helped fuel the soldiers that have fought in wars all across centuries, right? I mean, this really, they are a sustainable source of protein. They're a lean protein. And they helped save the United States a couple of times, right? Uh, yes, they have. In, in fact, they actually uh, took over from the buffalo when the uh, buffalo were killed out. The longhorns got to be propagated out to be the biggest beef producing uh, product that there was that they could feed the United States and the Confederate Army and all of the soldiers that were in the uh, early Americas. And the Battle of the Alamo. Yes, the Battle of the Alamo. Which were just a walk. So these guys are their ancestors actually helped feed the soldiers that were fighting at the Battle of the Alamo. Just cool stuff. Really cool history that is tied to this animal and a big part of kicking off the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. I mean, it's 2020. It's a new decade, new fun, all these kinds of events going on. Y'all doing good? Oh, they're all, everybody's chill right now. Everybody's like, yeah, we're okay. They're all full of, of all kinds of food. I saw people eating like different tacos and stuff out here. But look at this. How many cattle are right behind us? They got 70 head of Texas Longhorns. 70 right behind us. And there's little ones and there's big ones, right? Yes. <laughs> and what are some of the longest horns that you have there on the ranch? 
uh, over 120 inches. 120 inches. That's wild. And they look like the actual, when you think of a Longhorn, like UT, right? Uh, yes, yeah, some of them are like UT and some are called a Texas Twist. Like they have long corkscrews out both sides. That is incredible. Dr. Kimball, thank you so much. Thank you, and sir. thank you for bringing the cattle out here and helping us have such an amazing event. Gentlemen. We're going to toss it back there to Mike and Fiona at the front of the parade. We're coming at you guys. Get ready. <laughs> yes, he's slowly moving closer. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Can't see him yet. Won't be long, though, when he's coming up Houston Street there. Oh uh, Well, they still have a long way to go before they reach the end of the parade, and the route starts near I-35 and Houston Street, works its way through the streets of downtown, and ends near La Vieta. Now, there is a construction detour near the San Pedro Creek Project this year. Yep. Now, along the way and toward the end of the parade, they're going to pass one heck of a hoedown. The Case Acquarelle is happening at the Pavilion by Hilton on South Alamo. It is a huge parade watch party and rodeo kickoff celebration. And that is, of course, where our Jen Tobias Strusky is. Jen is wrangling up all sorts of fun there at the KSAT Corral. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yes, hello there, guys. We are having a great time. This is the KSAT Corral. Behind me, you can see there's lots of insiders here. There are some waiting in line for some food. Check out this, what I've got here. This is Pan de Campo. They made it earlier. We were live in GMSA, and now I get to eat it. But I may share it. I don't know. We're going to walk this way and talk to some of the insiders. I've got Ralph and Rose. Hi there. So you're having a good time today? Oh, having a great time. What's your favorite part about being here in the inside? Uh, I think it's just, uh, uh, it's been a beautiful day and hanging out with the family and stuff, bring the family. So tell me who you have here. I have my grandson, Eli, and my granddaughter, Penelope. So, and my wife, Roseanne. And Roseanne, uh, you guys are KSAT devoted watches, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so are you having fun? You got something to eat too? We did, it was great. Yes, All right. it was so good. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoy your time. And, you know, we said KSA Insiders, another thing they get to do is see the uh, faces here. Let's come share. Maybe I'll share. Hey, guys. Yay! Here we go. I'm going to share. Do we have so we this have is here. Pan de Campo. This is from the Mexican vaqueros. Used to eat it, Pan de Campo. And it's uh, made with the good stuff, manteca. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Can we, can we are, really yeah. Are you guys having fun? Oh, my gosh. So much fun. We have met so many of our fabulous KSAT viewers and taken so many pictures and heard the best stories. This has been a fabulous day. This is the first year that we've done something like this. Why do you think it's so important, Steve? I mean, you get to come and meet our viewers. It's so awesome. Well, that's the best part. I mean, the best part is that we're all together. We're all having fun. You know, we, this isn't anything that's in this world that everything's usually so serious and, you know, there's a lot going on. It's nice just to be with people that, you know, in our case at viewers. I mean, all of that is great. And I get to see people that I haven't seen in a while, like Leslie, you know, I mean, I never get to see her and Jen. And oh, oh, somewhere. this guy. Hi. Yeah, Paul Venema, <laughs> Mark Austin. Uh, it's great. It's Hi, Paul. Great that he's and we got Tiffany, Tiffany uh, Alicia. Alicia. All right, how is it? It's really good. Okay. Really well, they're, they're telling me I got to wrap up now. So, right. sorry, you guys are missing out on the fun, but uh, I won't rub it in. You guys eat that. And uh, back to you. We're gonna check back in. There's a bull I might get on over there. There's a motorcycle. Like I said, lots of fun. Back to you guys. Okay, I know it's fun down there, and it looks like a lot of fun. You better save some of the biscuits and gravy and everything else yes. for us. So don't have too much fun with the food yet. So, you know, so we're, we're going to hopefully get to mosey on down there at the end of the parade. Mm -hmm. Check out all the fun Catch and get the biscuits and gravy. You know, it takes a whole lot of people to put on the incredible celebrations, and we want to give a huge thanks to the all-new 2020 Silverado HD for making this live coverage possible. Now, before the cattle arrive and clear us out of here, we do have some business to take care of. We have some free stuff to give away and some fabulous contestants ready to play. Oh, yes. Are you All right. ready? Are you ready? Your first name is? Elijah. Elijah. And how old are you? Seven. Seven. Are you ready for your first question? Yes. You're playing for some, some tickets. All right. Okay. Here we go. Okay. What animal do children ride during the mutton-busting rodeo event? Bah. Bah. Sheep? Yes! yes! Oh my Yay! gosh! Yes, sheep! Congratulations! Yay! All right! Okay, and your name? Dion. Dion? Okay, how old are you? Nine. Nine. All right, are you ready, ready? to play? Mm -hmm. Here we go. What animal does someone ride in the barrel racing rodeo event? A horse. Yes! Woo! Very nice! Okay, nicely done. Your name? Here. What was it? Blake. Blake, and how old are you? Ten. Ten. All right, he's ready to play. I know okay. Blake's ready. True or false? Keith Urban is performing at this year's rodeo. 
true. 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 All yes. right. All right. And you your go. your first name? Mia. Mia. Okay. How old are you? Five. Five. All right. She's ready. Okay. Mm-hmm. Give us your best. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. Yeah. Yay! Right. <laughs> Very that nice job, fantastic. Mia. Congratulations. Your first name? Martin. Martin. All right. How old are you? Nine. Nine. All right. Martin is ready to play. Okay. What kind of cookie do the pigs get as a reward in the pig races? Uh, it's that one you twist apart and eat the cream out of the middle of it. Oh, um, Oreo. Yes, yes, you did. correct. Congratulations. Fantastic. Okay, you did excellent, great. excellent job, everybody. Let's excellent hear from job. All, Yay. all right. Well, we are getting closer to the big moment when the Longhorns arrive. We're going to be checking in at the Vaquero Cookoff and the Ksat Corral. There's a lot happening today, and of course, we are just getting started. Yep, and the Longhorns are somewhere down there. We are going to take a quick break, but when we come back. The 2020 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive is going to be in full swing, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the 2020 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. SA Live coverage is powered by the all-new 2020 Silverado HD. Well, we are all anxiously waiting dozens of Longhorn cattle to come right down Houston Street, of course, and get this parade really started. We've been told they were about three blocks away, just made the turn back on to Houston Street floors after that little uh, detour for construction. So they are coming. Don't hear me up, though. <laughs> so another part of this Western Heritage Weekend is the Vaquero Cook-Off, and it is a culinary cowboy competition. <laughs> I like the alliteration with that. So, our Gen Tobias Truskies out there live to tell us all about what's happening and all the different categories they're competing in. You get all the good, good food job. today, don't I'm you, Jen? You, you're right on. You know, I'm not sorry, guys. <laughs> yes, so here we got some borracho beans. I got Tim with me. What is the secret to good borracho beans? Good borracho beans is getting up early and get the beer ready to go in the borracho beans. And it's the bacon and the onions and a lot of care, and they come out beautiful. So that's the difference between borracho and charro? Yes, yes. Good beer in the borracho, and it makes them even better. I yes. think I'm going to start sticking to borracho now yeah, that I know that. Right. That's right. And that's you guys right. won yesterday? Yeah, we took second prize yesterday, and then tonight we're going to go after the first prize. Okay, so yes. you're hard at work. Yes, I got ma'am. Richard back here and working uh, on, tell me what you're working on. Making on menudo. So we're cleaning the menudo right now and trimming it and getting the better cuts for the judge side. And then the other cuts are going into what we're giving away to all the guests that are here. And what is the secret to some good menudo? Because you guys know your stuff. Come on, besides clean, dry, then you need to come over here. And this is the secret right here, okay. the broth. So these are pig's feet with all the spices and vegetables. So we're cooking that separate. We'll strain it and then put it with the broth. So the broth's clear and uh-huh. has all the flavor of the pig's feet. People don't like seeing them. Most of them don't. Okay. So, but the flavor is so rich and it makes all the difference in the world. What is the history, if you can tell me, uh, behind Menudo? Because I know in my family it brings us all together. Tell me a little bit about okay, what well you the like. The history is because it's the Vaqueros. South Texas, and it's the merging of Mexican cowboys and your traditional Western cowboys. Out in the wilderness, out in the country, they waste nothing. So they had to figure out how you can make tripe, which is the lining of the milk bladders, taste good, utilize it. The pig's feet, no one really did anything with them. So when they merged them together with spices and onions and cooked it real slow, it ended up being a stew slash soup. That's how you got menudo. though. I never knew this. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> and you told me I better start learning, right? Pass, yeah, pass, pass it down. The on. Okay. 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 Oh. You, and, and what else do you guys have cooking here? Because I want to know. Okay, we have carnitas that going on okay. right now. We have the borracho beans, okay. and the competition will turn those in at two. Okay. The carnitas that will turn it in four, and the menudo's at six. So do you have any carnitas ready right now? Not right it's, now, but come okay. back okay. in one hour. Once I get this on, then that's what we're starting next. Okay. So you're going to keep working on that. Yes. So what is the secret, Tim? Last year, you guys did pretty good. We right? did really good last year. We took first place a lot, and this year we're going to probably do it again. I'm telling you. We're just hap- just a lot of care into food, I mean, and it all goes Look good. at this. Look at these borracho I mean, beans. I think our, our producer, Nicole, got to try some. How are yeah. they? They're good, right? See, so, yeah. And then, so just keep the loving care of the stuff, and everything's going great. 
All yes. right. Well, there's other teams over here. I have to ask, how's the rivalry between the teams? I tell you, they're they're super people, and we just have a good time. A really good time. Okay, so it's all it's good all and good fun. It's fun and happiness. Yeah, we're okay. having a good time. All right, let's pour some more of these. Yeah. Yeah. And unless we lose. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, no hard feelings until yeah. you lose. Okay. So there we go. Okay, so the Boracho Beans, and I know, what's the name of your team? That's the Black Tie Fish Catering. Okay, and we have Team 210 is over there. There's music out here There's as everything. well. And and everybody's just working hard. I got, I think the Rob Sizzle over there. I'm gonna walk over there. Thank you guys. And so you guys can see there's a good time out here. Everyone's here, it's family friendly. I got Rob Sizzle over here. Misael, Misael over here. And we're having a good old time. So uh, I'm gonna send it back to you guys. <laughs> he lost me. I'm sorry, I'm exploring. Back to you guys. Thank Thank you very much, Jen. And we are now seeing the early stages of the parade coming by. We just had the uh, East Central FFA 4-H come by. They were carrying the banner that is basically leading off the parade. There's the sign right now that is talking about the uh, Kimball cattle coming. And they're still back there just a ways, but they're definitely on their way. There we see Kimball Cattle Company from... Carn City, Texas, and they're way off in the distance, leading the way are all of those 70 head of Longhorn cattle. You know, and remember, Dr. Kimball was on our show not, to, you know, just the other day. Right. You know, and was talking about just getting to do this tradition year after year, and that it's an emotional moment when he goes by the Alamo with all that cattle, just to be such a part of history. And even, he said, to walk along Houston Tree like this and see all the people that come out here and truly appreciate what this means and truly appreciate the history of the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. Yes, okay, and just looking at the kids' faces, he says, when you know they see the cowboys and the cowgirls and they just really take it all in and it could be the first time for some of the little ones, you know, really seeing this in person. Even we've been doing it so many years now, and watching those Longhorns come by here, they are definitely impressive, and there they all are. Some of them, what was interesting too, they their horns grow at different rates, mm -hmm. and there was one that was on the show the other day that he had on last year at this time, and there's almost like growth rings because they slow down growing and they grow very quickly, and the one that was on the show, his horns grew about 17 to 18 inches just in one year. Then when they get older, they don't grow quite as quickly. And uh, they can be incredibly precise with their horns. I didn't know that they can literally just get a tick off themselves with the tip of their horn and know exactly where, where to find it, boom. Yeah, you gone. would think if they were going through an, an entryway, a gate, something like that, that would have to be as wide as their horns. All they need to do is get through a space that is wide as their shoulders and hips, and they can turn their head sideways enough to get those horns going long ways, if you will, and they can get through just like that. But he had to load them up about, oh, five o'clock in the morning, 70 head of longhorn cattle, and he actually had to, they don't like to go into dark spaces like that. And he had to yeah. put up a bunch of big floodlights and everything like that to get them all in there. But there it is. I mean, this is, except for the uh, the pavers on the street, this is what it would have looked like 100, 150 years ago, 200 years ago, as these, these longhorns are being brought into town, maybe heading out on the trail, maybe coming into market. And there they are. And you can see some of the little ones, too. Oh, so incredibly cute. And, of course, their horns and hooves made out of the same material. Yes, indeed they are. As they are approaching, we uh, are, you know, there's a lot of changes going on this year. This is the official start of the rodeo. And one thing that has changed is the kind of the layout of the grounds. You know, the, the carnival has always been kind of in that, that one little corner right down there right by Houston Street. That's now on the other side of the AT&T Center. So they've got a little bit more spread out. Uh, they also have the, the different stages, not the ones obviously inside with the headline performers, and they are dedicated stages. So if you want to hear just some nice, easygoing music, right. that's going to be always on one stage. If you want to hear some rock, that's going to be on another stage. They have also, by the way, uh, Mutton Bustin. That's one of the biggest events, and... That is going to be available to just about everybody. There's dedicated mutton busting, and everybody gets to give it a try. It's oh, little kids. 
Look at that. They're right behind us right now. The Longhorns have arrived here as they approach the corner of Houston and Presa. That is always just such a beautiful sight to see with those Longhorns like that. Okay, and of course, Kimball Cattle has been in operation since 1982 with a herd of over 200 Texas Longhorn cattle, and they've won hundreds of awards for their Longhorns. The Kimballs are proud to have bred and raised eight-time world and international grand champion, Texas Longhorn trophy steer. His name was Wow. And in honor of Wow, the Kimballs built Wow's Longhorn Museum in downtown Carn City. Dr. Scott Kimball and Mr. Sean O'Brien are walking with Longhorns today. Of course, David Elder just interviewed Dr. Kimball. And here they all are. And there's, look at the little cowgirl. I don't know if we can see her right in front, but she's Hi! up there in the saddle. Oh, I love and hat. <laughs> there she is. Look at that cute with that pink drum. Hello, Dr. Kimball. Good to see you. <laughs> and uh, you better scooch over just a little bit because there's some very, very long horns that almost get, get you, Fiona. <laughs> Thanks for having my six. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> 60, uh, 70 head of cattle making their way now right down Houston Street. Here in the clop of the hooves, right down on Houston. All right, coming up behind them, of course, is the Texas Hill Country Stock Dog Association. And there are 60 sheep with three goats. Now, there you're going to see three dogs. Cage is nine years old, and he was previously owned by Joanne Noble. Joanne and her dogs had won numerous herding trials throughout the state of Texas and beyond. And they, today they are walking in honor of her. She is one of the founding members of the Texas Hill Country Stock Dog Association who passed away in 2017. The Texas Hill Country Stock Dog Association continues her passion of encouraging new people and dogs who are starting in their careers in herding. Okay, and Cage is, of course, the black and white border collie. We visited their ranch recently, and, you know, I got to see him in action, and he's got some pretty fancy footwork. It is absolutely incredible at just how clever and intelligent these dogs are. The other two dogs you see is Junebug, who's 11 years old, and Rascal, who's 7 years old. And it's always great to watch them kind of work in a pack. You know, mm -hmm. one will be the leader, and a couple other ones kind of herd them all together, and... Yeah, they are amazing, amazing animals. The United States Marine Corps Mounted Color Guard is what you're looking at right now. They, uh, they've re represented the Marine Corps in events across the U.S. for the last 53 years. It is absolutely beautiful to see them on horseback. This is the last remaining Mounted Color Guard with the Marine Corps. And the Marine Corps are riding wild Palomino Mustangs adopted from the Bureau of Land Management's Adopt the Horse program. Every Mustang has been carefully selected for their Palomino color and disposition. The horses and Marines train together weekly to maintain their performance readiness. The Mounted Color Guard strives to maintain its traditions and standards of excellence, fitting their storied past. And it's a privilege of every Marine who has been given the opportunity to be a part of its legacy. Staff Sergeant Esteban Warega is the staff non-commissioned officer in charge of the Mounted Color Guard, and this unit is stationed at Marine Corps Logistics Base in Barstow, California. It's an honor for the Marines seen before you to be at the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive, and it is quite a sight to see. All right, we'll be right back with more from the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. SA Live's coverage brought to you by the all-new 2020 Silverado HD. We'll be right back after this. And welcome back to the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive SA Live. The coverage is powered by the all-new 2020 Silverado HD. And we're not clowning around. Well, yeah, we are clowning around. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. There are the rodeo clowns, of course. And then here comes the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, also known as the San Antonio Livestock Exposition or Sale. 
Yeah, and these are the clowns that help represent that. The success of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo is attributed to more than 6,000 volunteers who give countless hours to the organization. They are a driving force to support the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Mission, a volunteer organization that emphasizes agriculture and education to develop the youth of Texas. And with the community donor and volunteer support, the organization has donated... And this is one of those numbers that is almost unbelievable. 100, donated more than $186 million to the youth of Texas through scholarships, grants, endowments, and junior livestock auctions. And all the folks that put together not only this cattle drive and parade and the entire stock show and rodeo, but boy, they do one heck of a fantastic job each and every year. So hats off to all of those folks. And hats off to all the folks that are out here. Here's another uh, shot of cattle cam. And the cattle were just going past the Alamo. That's right downtown on Alamo Street, I believe. And the Alamo would be on the right side of your screen. You know, one thing I think everyone's looking forward to also with this rodeo is the fabulous concerts that are going to be happening. I know that tonight, country singer Cody Johnson is going to perform. Tomorrow is, of course, Sammy Hager. And then even February 8th, Dustin Lynch, February 9th, Aaron Watson, February 10th, Chris Young. So all sorts of fun to be had. We're going to have more from the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive right after this. All right, welcome back to SA Live's coverage of the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. And you are looking at the Longhorn making their way down the parade route. They have just crossed Alamo and Market Streets and are continuing south on Alamo. Oh, that's such a great sight to see, and it couldn't be a more beautiful day. And in the background, you may hear the San Antonio Pipes and Drums, formed in 1986 by founder Harold Sutherland, who started playing more than 50 years ago. They present traditional bab- bagpipe band music for the enjoyment of both musicians and the crowds. Notice the kilts in a variety of Scottish and Irish tartans. Tartan is the pattern you see crisscross, horizontal, and vertical bands in multiple colors. They are often mistaken for plaid. I thought it was the same thing. Yeah. Learn something new. <laughs> Band members range from teenagers to great grandparents and play in parades, special events, festivals, and celebrations. Let's listen for a second. up the San Antonio High School South San Antonio High School FFA South San Antonio High School FFA chapter was founded in 2014 and this uh, current year's officers include President Jocelyn Ramos Vice President Dennis Puente Secretary Crystal Hernandez Treasurer Shauna Parker and of course all the others And here is a gorgeous sight. Jack Sellers, Bear County Palomino Patrol and Drill Team. This is one of the most popular and patriotic parts of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. They're known for the performance of the San Antonio Rodeo Grand Entry. There is extensive history behind the Palomino Patrol, much of it surrounding the stunning saddles and flashy uniforms which uh, the team was originated in 1951. And those horses are so gorgeous. The golden color is sparkling in the sun, the white mane, and then look at all the trappings that they are, have on there. And of course, the beautiful American flags they're holding and the Texas flag. Mr. Jack Sellers founded the Jack Sellers Bear County Palomino Patrol back in 1951. In 2003, the Palomino Patrol drill team was formed to ride with the Palomino Patrol in the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Oh, they are beautiful. Coming up next is the Fort Sam Houston caisson section is one of only two active duty full-time caisson units in the United States Army. The other is located at Arlington National Cemetery, of course, in Washington, D.C. The caisson at Fort Sam Houston proudly honors fallen members of the military with funeral honors at the Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery. Caisson horses are all named after former sergeants major of the Army and Medal of Honor recipients in the United States 5th Army, which is headquartered at the historic quadrangle on Fort Sam Houston right here in San Antonio. 
thank you all very much for your service. All right. Oh. So Huey is the action sports brand for the Western lifestyle. Its mission is to shine a spotlight on the unique lifestyle of Western athletes. I didn't know they had their own right. brand. Interesting. Next right up. Right behind them. We have the Rosas de Castilla. It was founded under the direction of Rose and Cena in San Antonio. These young ladies are a side saddle equestrian riding group who participate in exhibitions and parades in surrounding counties and help with community service locally. And they are so beautiful on those horses and those gorgeous mm -hmm. dresses. They are also ambassadors who meet and greet dignitaries during their visit to the city of San Antonio. There are 15 members ranging in age from 4 to 19 years old. Hey, they placed second in the cavalcade section of the 2018 Battle of Flowers Parade and placed first in the 2019 Veterans Parade. Their mission is to develop and inspire young ladies by establishing a place to teach and learn the art of Mexican side saddle riding, promoting culture and heritage. Just look at how beautiful. Oh, those dresses are just gorgeous, draped like that, side saddle style. Oh. And coming up behind them, a young lady that I got to meet last June, Miss Rodeo Texas. Miss Rodeo Texas is Jordan Maldonado. Yes, the 20 year old native of Bernie will be attending Texas A&M University and College Station and major in animal science. She received a scholarship for the San Antonio, from the San Antonio uh, Livestock Show and winning champion Maine Anju Steer in 2017. Jordan has many diverse interests, all in aspects of agriculture, ranching, and the rodeo industry. It has been my honor to MC the Miss Rodeo Texas pageant for about the past 13 years. All right, and behind her are the Texas Heritage Riders. Yep, the mission is to promote and preserve the heritage of Texas, our Western lifestyle, and the contribution and impact horses have made on the way we live. They do this through working relationships with our military, local police organizations, charitable organizations, educating the public, and inspiring our youth to follow their dreams. Why is it so relaxing even just to watch horses mm -hmm. walk down the street <laughs> like this? And even to ride them, too. Hey, they've won awards in the past at the Fiesta Flambeau Parade, Battle of Flowers, Medina County Fair, and lots more. All right. Oh, here comes Jasper and Jackson pulling their late 1800s covered wagon. Yeah, this wagon's been lovingly restored to represent how it would have looked in its original condition. These wagons were used to bring many goods to the people of the frontier, from household goods to medicine and whiskey. Kind of. Kind of the same thing, maybe. Uh, back then, <laughs> whiskey was medicine. <laughs> this wagon is owned and operated by Bandit Williams and Stacy Black. The mule team pulling the wagon, as we said, are Jasper and Jackson, brothers that are only one year apart. Oh, look at them go. And I love seeing all those old wagons because these are, are obviously a lot of them are literally restored from where they used to be. We've got one parked down there at the Case Corral, built in 1893. Looks like the brothers there, those two mules are kind of pushing. It's like, no, I want to be in. No, let me. No, no, me. No, no. Typical no, brothers. Move over. No, stop. Stop it. This is my side. Stay on your side. <laughs> and right on the heels of that is the Generations Federal Credit Union wagon. And I'll tell you what, Generations Federal Credit Union has a rich history of serving San Antonio. It's the fifth largest credit union in the city, and they strive every day to make it as easy as possible for you to do business with them. They're going to provide full service convenience through multiple branch locations, the call center, and secure online and mobile services. Oh, and look at those gorgeous Clydesdales pulling that wagon. Their accounts are designed to meet the needs of members of every generation, from everyday transactions to lifeline investments. All right, the Wildlife Committee has been an official group with SAIL for nine years. Their chairman is Scott Weitrick. There are roughly 70 members ranging from ages 12 all the way up to 75. 
Riding on those Longhorns. <laughs> yes, so much fun. Their focus is to educate the public regarding the seven regions of the great state of Texas and our natural resources. And you can visit the Wildlife Committee at the San Antonio Rodeo Grounds, located at the Family Fair next to the Hall of Fame. That's just so cool watching Ride the Longhorns, which mm -hmm. we got to do a couple of years ago in Market yes, Square. Very carefully, yes. Morning. And coming up, the San Antonio Stock Show and Rory like to pay tribute to the pageantry and skills of the Charo and Escaramunza by introducing the Chariata as an official event this year. Yes, it's going to be held at the Expo Hall at the rodeo on the rodeo grounds on February 16th at 5 p.m. Now, Chariata dates back way back to the 16th century when it became the official sport of Mexico. The first chariadas were ranch work competitions between haciendas. And it's best described as a mix of rodeo skills, pageantry, and riders showing traditional competitive roping and ranch skills, but also the exquisite costumes. So it's kind of everything all wrapped up into one. Oh, uh, yes. So please join us as we take a trip back in time to old Mexico and experience this incredible chariada. And look at how beautiful, again, those costumes are and their roping skills. Oh, there is so much here, and we are going to have a whole lot more of the 2020 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive coming up after this. Welcome back, and you are looking at the Jefferson High School Lassos. The world-famous Thomas Jefferson Lassos are under the direction of Mrs. Mary Garcia and Assistant Director Miss Christina Vickers. Established way back in 1932, the Lassos caught the eye of the nation when they were featured on the cover of Life magazine. Later, their notoriety earned them the right to perform for the First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt and even inspire a Hollywood movie. They can be seen across South Texas parades, community events, numerous fundraisers. And they are wonderful. Oh, yes. Get ready, folks, because this next one is the fan favorite winner that folks got to vote for. They are the original youth country and western dance team, the Little Wranglers. They are eight kids ages 5 to 18. They travel all over Texas and beyond, spreading their love for country and western swing. And these kids can dance. Oh, yeah, they can. The Little Wranglers are patterned after the internationally famous Aggie Wranglers from Texas A&M. They perform signature stylized country and western jitterbugs, swing dance moves, and that entertainment live with big depths of smiles to the faces of audiences everywhere. Look at that. Look at that. I know. Oh, my gosh. Well, since the group started, they've performed over 600 performances and continue to wrap those up. Oh, that's fantastic. Well-deserved being the fan favorite. All right. Grupo Folklorico de Bendiciones, of course, is what you're looking at right now. They are an award-winning Folklorico dance group from San Antonio. This professional dance group was discovered at, by performing at numerous charity events around Texas and established in 2015 by Anthony Salazar, a friend of SA Live. Mission is to continue and share their talent and culture and look at those beautiful dresses. Their mission is to continue to share their talent and culture in the community. Grupo Folklorico de Bendiciones performs a variety of traditional dances from Mexico. You can find out where they're going to be performing next. You can find them on Facebook. And here oh. come the Charles de Bejar. The Charles de Bejar are the competition team of Bear County. Composed of 13 teams, they compete in Chariada, or the traditional ranch competition of old Mexico. It's the precursor of rodeo. It's both similar but different. Charos and Charas compete in traditional uh, traje. Traje, traje or cloths of old Mexico. In accordance with the Latin idea of sociality, they compete in teams 
and teams are usually centered around families. It's not unusual to find a team with three or four generations of charros performing. Rodeos emphasize utility, while chareada is more concerned with style. In team roping, in rodeo, catching the steer as quickly as possible is, of course, the purpose. In chareada, catching the steer with the most beautiful floreo, or making a flower with the rope, is the purpose. And that's why chareada is sometimes called rodeo with style. <laughs> that is why charros and charas all say, Viva chareada! The Raffle Committee Horse Carriage is coming along on Houston Tree. This is determined to motivate a committee chases every dollar to raise money for the hardworking kids who put in early mornings and late evenings to nurture and raise their incredible 4-H or FFA animal projects. Kids who make the steer, goat, lamb, pig, or poultry sale for their junior livestock auctions are direct beneficiaries of this committee's year-long effort. And a lot of folks helping out. Thank you to everybody. Here we have the Bandera Pro Rodeo Association. It presents three nights of family fun at Professional Rodeo over Memorial Day weekend in Bandera at Mansfield Park. It's the board's honor to support the San Antonio Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. And the Committee of Volunteers is dedicated to increasing enthusiasm about the sport of rodeo, educating young folks about the history of Ford and the Cowboys... Um, homage to the sport, great in preserving the cowboy heritage in this great state. These rodeos are, of course, family-oriented events. Join us as we celebrate the rich Western heritage in this great state of Texas. And right behind them is the Tejas Rough Rider Drill Team. They're an award-winning patriotic drill team comprised of men and women ages 13 all the way up to 65. Uh, their team was established in 2005 by their founding captain, Colleen Dyer, and is currently under the direction of Captain Roxy Vasquez. And they have mother-daughter and father-son team members as well. Those Several team outfits. members have been with them for over 10 years. And we got some really special folks coming up here next. A couple of familiar faces let's in see, the let's crowd. See, let's see, let's see. I spy. Oh, I spy. There they are. Uh, oh, yep. my gosh. KSAT 12 anchors, David Sears and Ursula Perry. They're with five loyal KSAT 12 insiders and their guests who won today's ride in the parade. The winners are Bill Dub, Ana Gracia, Deba DeRocco, Laura Castillo, and Rose Gomez. All right, here are the Southwestern Pasofino Horse Association. It's a regional group active with Pasofino horses. The Pasofino horse reflects its Spanish heritage through its proud gait, grace, and elegance. The Pasofino is born with a much prized four beat gait that basically means they've got a really smooth walk. Oh, yes. The breed's beginnings can be traced to the Spanish conquistadors more than 500 years ago. And here are some folks from up north at the Fort Hood 1st Cavalry Division, led by Captain Jenny Nocella and Sergeant First Class Brandon Donaldson. Fort Hood's Horse Cavalry Detachment maintains the standards and traditions of the U.S. Cavalry during the 1880s. Yes, these active duty soldiers have volunteered to support the United States Army and the 1st Cavalry Division by participating in parades, ceremonies, and events such as the annual Rose Bowl Parade and Presidential Inauguration. The Horse Cavalry Detachment Station at Fort Hood was established in January of 1972. And thank you very much for your service, everybody. A whole lot more is coming up. Stick around. Welcome back to the 2020 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. And, of course, I say live coverage is powered by the all-new Silverado HD. Uh, yes, the Escaramuza Orgullo Mexicano de Rancho El Pitalo. They, are, they were established in 2009 and consisted of eight female team members. It's the only event that holds female participation in Chariari in Mexico's national sport. Escaramuzas gallop in synchronized fashion, creating flowers, patterns, and different dangerous crossings that can be appreciated by the crowd. They are strictly scored based upon timing to arrival of these dangerous crossings as well as appearance. Oh, look at how beautiful mm -hmm. they are. Those skirts are absolutely gorgeous. Team must be presentable at all times based on the strict rules established. Next. 
The 31st annual Helotus Festival Association PRCA Rodeo is going to take place at the Helotus Fairgrounds May 2nd through the 4th, and this is the Pro Rodeo Association. The first Helotus Corneval was held in 1966 to celebrate the building of the new local post office and was primarily financed by the late John T. Floor, founder of Floor's Country Store, which still operates in downtown Helotus. The Helotus Corneval combines four days of food, dancing, music, rodeo, arts and crafts, carnival, and contest. Oh, yes. Oh, Aww. you ready? You ready? Ready? Get, get ready for all the aww. aww. You're gonna see. These are the high stocking miniature horses and Shetland ponies owned and trained by Robin and Jim Bailey. Located in Lavernia, these little horses come in all colors, and it looks almost like shapes and sizes as well. Mini horses and Shetlands go by height requirement. The Shetland is typically 42 inches or fewer, and a mini horse is considered to be 38 inches. Do I, do I do my dad joke here? Do it. They all have a sore throat because they're a little horse. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We'll be here the rest of the parade, folks. <laughs> High-stocking miniature and Shetlands provide boarding lessons for kids. The True Women Drill Team. True Women Drill Team members are proud to honor the pioneering spirit of the women who helped settle Guadalupe and surrounding counties. The team's name comes from the book True Women, written by Guadalupe County's own Janice Woods Windle. Current members come from a wide variety of backgrounds, including business owners, healthcare professionals, educators, domestic engineers, and more. A big thank you to our 2020 Dill Team sponsors, RVS of TX Mobile, RV Service, Marion Animal Hospital, Chuck Hughes Memorial Arena, Green Cross, and Quarter Moon Plumbing. Next we have the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Ranch Committee. San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Ranch Rodeo Committee proudly supports working cowboys and Western heritage with the annual Ranch Rodeo Invitational. This elite event held on the last day of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo features six of the best teams from ranches across Texas. Invited to compete for money, prizes, and of course, bragging rights. The cowboys work together in a series of fast-paced timed events where their ranch hand skills and talent brings the Stony Room only, standing room only crowd to their feet. Here is the Sale International Committee, which is the San Antonio Livestock Exchange. The International Committee strengthens relationships with the leaders of Mexico and other visiting countries with agricultural interests. The committee strives to provide an excellent experience for our international guests by offering service, hospitality, and education. And the relationships built by the committee benefit and promote the stock show and rodeo and the agricultural industry as a whole. All right. Fiesta Especial is a program with Disability SA. It's an official Fiesta San Antonio experience created for children and adults with physical, cognitive, and developmental differences and the family and friends who love them. Fiesta Especial creates inclusive and educational experiences, engaging individuals with disabilities in the culture, diversity, and celebrations throughout the community. I think we just saw the buggy barn go by. Ah. Yes. Mm -hmm. this, Here we have. There we go. They, yeah, they switched it up on us. Yeah. This is Team Disabilities Special. And here we have... Oh. Oh, here's the Buggy Barn. Buggy Barn. The Buggy Barn Museum has been involved with the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo's Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive for the past six years. And this is their seventh year of the parade. Third year is the Wagon Train Leader. The Buggy Barn Museum is located up Highway 281 North in, in Blanco, Blanco County. It yep. has more than 150 unique buggies, carriages, and wagons. The Buggy Barn is dedicated to providing a unique educational opportunity to step back in time to the late 1800s and early 1900s. Many of their buggies have been in movies, commercials, television series, and even a presidential inauguration parade. You know, it's great hearing those wagon wheels go down the street like that. It is an extremely, extremely unique sound. Go take a step back in time, of course, at the Buggy Bar Museum and Pine Moor Old West Studio. Some of the wagons in the parade today, a trolley, an 1885-seater, black and white vis-a-vis, -a, -vis, a wagonette, and a 1919 Owensboro. You know, we got to give a big shout out to the folks coming up behind. Mm -hmm. Literally, because they've, they've been yeah. a few places, mm -hmm. spots in the parade so far. The John Jay High School Student Council 
Scoopers. Oh, yes. The John Jay Student Council is one of the most active organizations on campus. They're involved in the preparation as well as organization of various activities throughout the school, community, and city. Yep. And the John Jay Council is one of the most active organizations on campus. And... They're working hard. They've been working hard. This is character building, as my, my mom and dad would <laughs> yes. say. Thank you for all you do for the parade, kids. All right. Make some noise for the first of its kind, the Palo Alto College Marching Mariachis. This hybrid marching band infuses traditional mariachi culture into its performances, displaying the raw talent and musical passions of Palo Alto College students. Let's hear it for the Marching Mariachis. Oh my gosh, this has been so much fun. It is always wonderful. It has been fantastic out here. Of course, the parade is still going down, hanging right on Alamo and heading down there. And of course, that's where the Vaquero cook-off is. And the man who's always can sniff out where the food is, is... <laughs> oh, yes, we do want to check in with David Elder because he's wrangling up, I'm sure, as you mentioned, some really good grub. Hey guys, yeah, we're out here at the second annual Vaquero Cook-Off, which right now, Richard O'Hara. Now, you have some delicious food getting cooked up out here. You've already got some awards from different things that you've been cooking up, but right now, you got some beans right behind us. Correct. Talk to me what it's like to be a part of this event. Well, the, the money goes to great school things, scholarships, and so it's great to help kids out. But it's a lot of fun, and it's a good community thing that brings people together. Food does that at times, yeah, right? <laughs> It's a great way to spread culture, especially when you're making delicious beans like what you got right behind us right here. Y'all, check out these beans. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Talk to me about, look, if people are making beans at home, give us a tip. What's a good tip? Slow cooking, good beans, clean, slow cooking, bacon, pico de gallo, garlic, and salt. And that's it. That's it. That's, That's all you it. got. Now, when it comes to like the seasonings, the cumino, stuff like that, is there any like secret seasoning that you use? I always use what my mother and grandmother did. Garlic and salt are the only two seasonings we put in it. <laughs> now, the other meats, the carne guisada, the chili, the menudo, it's a lot of other ingredients. The one that has the most is the menudo, which we're cooking right over there right now. Oh my gosh. We've got to turn that in at six. Carne guisada will start pretty soon. The beans we turn in at 2, two o'clock. Oh, wow. So you're ready, so ready to go. We're ready to go. There you go. Now, now, right at the end of the parade right here, you guys, the Vaquero Cook-Off is going on right now. You can come get samples when you go to all these different vendors. you got to stop right here, though. Talk to Richard. He's going to hook you up with some beans that he's got going on. Absolutely delicious. Congratulations on winning. And good luck to you. Thank you. I'm going to have to try the beans right here. But we're going to send it off to Jen right now see what's going on. Hello. Yes, we are having a good time here at the Keitsa Insiders event. I've got my mimosa. And as you can see, this is what is going on in here. We've got kiddos doing their thing. And speaking of kids, let me put this down. We've got the little kid goats here. Um, I have Pace. Pace, who do we have here? Should I carry? We have a Nubian goat. And tell me about him. He is 10 days old and his name is Devon. Just 10 days old? Oh my goodness. Okay, let me see if I can carry him because he is adorable. So our Mike Osterhage carried one of these live on television and uh, he peed on him. Can you believe that? <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. So he's super cute. What about this guy? Is he also 10 days old? Uh, he's also 10 days old and his name is Shirley. What's his name? Shirley. Shirley. Oh, okay. All right. So I am going to put him back down and we're going to walk our way this way because there's some fun happening over here. So the kids are having fun. As you can see, the activities, they're just having a good old time. And everybody is so adorable in their decked out rodeo gear as well. And there's food. They're now serving lunch out there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and send it to break, but there's as you can see, the mechanical bull, maybe I'll make my way over there and get on that, but we'll see. We'll be right back after the break.
Okay, so I was asked to do this. I'm a little nervous. We're giving it a try. I told you we're having fun out here at the KSAT Insiders event. So, Nicole, I'm going to hand you the mic, our lovely producer. And we're just going to go like this. You got it. a new record oh you did 30 someone did 55 okay well we tried uh <laughs> maybe nicole will jump on there next so there's so much going on with the rodeo a lot of new things but we'll get to that in a second let me get down here and show you what's going on one of the cutest things that i saw here at the ksat insiders event is the cute decorations i'm in love with this i'm telling you guys if you missed out this year I'm sure we'll do it again. I'm a little out of breath. I'm sure we'll do it again next year. Are you having a good time? Look at you. You're adorable. What's your name? Emma. Emma? And what's your favorite thing about hanging out with the KSAT people today? Mm, I don't know. Did you get to eat something? How about you? Are you a loyal viewer? Yes, I was excited to see all of the KSAT uh, celebrities. You, it's exciting. Aww. <laughs> what, what did you think about the food? Did you get to eat something delicious? We got a biscuit and gravy. We got our uh, tacos and uh, some sausage and eggs. So we all got plenty to eat. And then we got some fruit later and, you know, the drinks and everything. So it was wonderful. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now you've been able, you come over here, little one. You've been able to see all these people, right? Right, this thing. Was there any, like, really funny moments? <laughs> there was one where this guy, he went on... He went on 30. He was doing the hat thing. Oh my gosh. And he black back and he, flipped off. Oh my goodness. Okay, maybe next time, right? Yeah. I'll do the whole thing in 30. Okay, we'll try. All right, well, speaking of the rodeo, this is the official kickoff. So excited, but there's a lot of changes this year. You guys can hang out, don't worry. And um, we're going to get you a sneak peek at what you can expect on the rodeo grounds. Take a look. So it is basically rodeo time here, San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, and it is just, I mean, it, it's one of those traditions here, but Cody Davenport, who's in charge, says it's the same, but it's a lot different this year. You've made some changes, right? Yeah, we definitely have, um, and, and you nailed it. It's the same, but it's different. We always stick to our traditions and our roots, but as far as um, the grounds and the pedestrian experience down here, we've activated new ground that was never used before. On the east side of the AT&T Center for our Spurs fans, we're always coming in the, that nice tree mm -hmm. area and stuff like that. Uh, we took that footprint there as an example, and we have activated that piece of ground where you'll see things going on there, like live music and vendors and things like that. The key is to be able to to allow people to move all over our grounds very freely to, to get the whole experience. Now the carnival's being actually moved over to at t Center Parkway. It is, we call it the, the northeast side mm -hmm. up there on the at t Parkway. As you move through that, you get to go by all the barns, you get to experience you know, the, the, the agricultural side of our kids that are showing and all that kind of stuff. Our Tejano tent was, was one of our biggest hits. I mean, we had our best crowds and, and so, you know, a lot of fun there. We've taken that footprint and we've tripled the size of it and created, you know, a, a mini La Vita type Niosa feel to it where mm -hmm. food vendors are there, you know, the, the same the same type of feel down there with the Tejano music going as well. Again, it goes back to our identity. We're San Antonio, Texas, and we want to embrace who we are and make sure that kind of feel is incorporated through all these things we're doing. One of the things that everybody is their favorite thing to watch and very few have gotten to participate in mutton busting, but that is also now gonna be open to almost everybody. We're gonna be doing mutton busting every single day. We'll have the clowns, we'll have the music, we'll have the video, it'll be amped up and fun. But now we can take so many kids by doing it every day, you know, and we can give them a chance to go in there and get the experience of mutton busting for their families. And then we have a format to where we're gonna have a wild card rodeo one night yeah. in the, the AT&T Center. The winners out of this through that period of time will get to go inside of the AT&T Center and compete in front of our PRCA crowd. Friday and Saturday nights, we call it Rodeo After Dark. We started it last year up till midnight. Um, we'll have live music and we'll have food going. We have uh, what I call static stages. And uh, what that means is that basically the, the format, the programming on that stage, your music will always be 
the same type. So in the past, we might, you might have gone to one stage and we adjusted, you never really knew what type of music you were hearing at that stage um, that night. Well, now you'll have a destination that you know the type of music that is being played there every single night you know, on that stage. Example, our wine garden, we have the acoustical acts going on there. You go to your Tejano tents, well, it's always going to be programmed with Tejano music. You go to the Bud Light stage, it's always going to be country music. And when you go to the active area that we just created, the east side of the AT&T Center, it's the throwback stage up there by the carnival. But they're static, you'll always know what you're gonna hear on those stage, the type of music you're mm -hmm. gonna hear. Um, open till midnight, and there'll be food there. So you stay for the after party. Go to the rodeo, that rodeo lets out, pick your destination, you and your friends, you know, keep carrying on and have a good time on the rodeo grounds. Is it delicious? Hi! <laughs> We're here, back here at the Ksat Corral. Look who joined Absolutely me. Absolutely delicious food. I love it. I was actually just at the Volcano Cook-Off. I got to have some beans, and now I get a stuffed jalapeno wrapped in bacon. Come on, baby, that's delicious. Yeah, you, I know we're both a little under the weather. Uh, yeah, you, feel you know, my, my throat is getting help with jalapenos. That's what's going to do it for me. And we have some friends over All here, right. too. Hello, everybody. You know these faces. <laughs> Are you guys having a good time? Yes, oh, I already awesome. named the goat. His, his name is Topo Chico. <laughs> <laughs> How was this experience for all of you to get up close with all of our fans? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, the energy out here is wonderful. Oh. And people are just Don't coming up to you saying hi. I feel, you know, excellent out here. Yes. Yeah. Nice to feel the love. What about you, Erica? It's been an amazing morning. Seeing everybody come out and just enjoy this spot has been amazing. Having a great time meeting everybody, getting to watch the parade, and of course hang out with cute baby goats and cute little fans. Cute little yeah. <laughs> great time. Yes. Have a anybody here have a favorite moment? See, we got Mark here too, RJ. Just, uh, just meeting the viewers and being able to connect with them, and also this guy right here, he's the star of the show. For sure. <laughs> I love how this turned into like a huge family friendly event, and our viewers are super dedicated, hardcore KSAP viewers. It was so nice to meet everybody today. Good time out here, right? And I, mean, I think, you know, with this being my, this is Ashley because I'm from Arkansas. This is my first time experiencing this atmosphere. And I ran into a lot of people with that same experience, and it was just fun. And I, I just had to tell them, thank you guys so much for making this possible. Like, this, this, is, this is Texas. Woo! Yes. All right. And Dobby, how was it getting up close with all the uh, cattle? Every year it's terrifying, but it's exciting at the same time because I always have to turn around to make sure they're not like right on me, you know, and I'll, 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 I'll hear the horses like right behind me. It's exciting stuff, but what a beautiful day. You couldn't have asked for a better day. It started out a little cold, it's warmed up, so now you can take the jackets off and just enjoy yourself. All these families out here, this is possibly the largest turnout I've ever seen for Cattle Drive. The weather has been, like I said, fantastic. Little ones are out here running around, and the, this event, it's great. So much food and so much music. It's awesome. All right. I was going to get them to do a yeehaw, but they're kind of busy with the goat. You want to go? Yeah, here we go. One, two, three. Yeehaw! Whoa! Thank you, guys. All right. Another out. successful Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. And our coverage was brought to you by all new 2020 Silverado HD. I hope you had a good time. I'm going to go eat now. I've been waiting. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to tune in to SA Live Monday through Friday at 1 o'clock and every Saturday at 10 a.m. right here on KSAT 12. Right. Delicious food. Are you going to share? Yeah, I'll share one. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, guys.